today's topic is acceleration. When I talk about acceleration, there is one problem that comes up more often than any other. And that's the fact that for the vast majority of seventh graders, acceleration and velocity are both words that in people's heads just mean going fast words. These are words that are just associated with the concept of speed. And a lot of people at the age of 12, 13 don't really have separate meanings for them. But acceleration and velocity are not the same thing at all. And it's really, really important that we understand the difference between these two terms. So let's compare the two. Velocity is just how fast something is going. What is its speed? has a much more specific definition. Acceleration is any change in velocity. Acceleration is any change in your velocity. Now, the one that you probably immediately think of when I say a change in velocity is what? What's like the way that we changed velocity before? Yeah, so going faster, that's one that people usually think of immediately. So speeding up is an example of acceleration. But Jahan also said slowing down. And slowing down is also an example of acceleration. Now, this is one of those circumstances where we have normal English, the language that you speak in your day-to-day -day life, and we have physics English, and those two languages are similar but not exactly identical. So in normal English, acceleration means speeding up. In physics English, acceleration is any change in velocity, which can mean speeding up, but it can also mean slowing down. There is one last thing that counts as acceleration. And to understand this last thing, you need to know that velocity isn't just how fast something is going. Technically, velocity is how fast something is going and in what direction. So if that's technically what velocity is, there is a third way that we can change something's velocity. What's the third option for changing things? We can change directions. Now, if you will remember, when we talked on Friday, I had y'all sit and think about how fast you were moving when you were being as still as you could. Right? So we thought about like, what does zero meters per second feel like? And then we talked about the fact that you're on the the Earth's surface, and the Earth is spinning really fast, and also the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, and also the Sun is orbiting around a black hole, and also the universe is expanding. So, when we talk about velocity, you have to have a frame of reference, something that you are comparing your speed to. So velocity requires a frame of reference. your motion right now as 0 meters per second and 460 meters per second, depending on what your frame of reference is. Yes? What do you need it to So right now, I could say you are moving 0 meters per second relative to the floor of this classroom. Or I could say you are moving 460 meters per second relative to the uh, pole, like the line going through the poles in this place. Right? Both of those statements are true. There isn't really a difference between an object at rest, something that is stationary, and an object in motion, 
something that is moving. Those two things, even though we think about them differently, they aren't really different. That's why we have this really weird, difficult to like conceive of truth. This is a, a, a fundamental truth about the universe that a lot of people don't like feel in their bones is true, which is this fact that it doesn't take any sort of push or pull to have something be moving. It only takes a push or a pull to make something change its motion. So for velocity, for something to be in motion at a constant rate, no force is needed. And force is just a physics word that means a push or a pull on an object. We'll get into way more detail about forces later on this year. So for velocity, no push required. And a push or a pull is known as a force. But for acceleration, you need an unbalanced force. When the cat springs out from underneath the couch, it is pushing with the muscles in its leg against the ground in order to propel itself forward. When the car is merging onto the highway, you have to push down on that gas pedal, causing an internal combustion reaction in the car's engine in which you're exploding some gases, causing the gas to expand in size, which is used to push a piston, which is used to make some things move. And we use a bunch of complicated machinery to use those things moving to make the wheels turn. Yes, Cher? Um, I was just going to say, like, a lot of times, like, people to wrap their head around is because we live in a world where there is so much friction and air resistance that all of us have the experience of if I roll a ball down the hill, like if I roll a ball across the yard, it eventually stops. But it stops because there is actually a force that's making it stop. Friction. There are lots of forces that we might not be able to see. There's lots of forces. Uh, and my recommendation is imagine things happening like in an ice skating rink or on an air hockey table or something like that. On an air hockey table, you get something moving and it just kind of keeps moving until it hits the back wall, even if it's moving really slowly, right? Say that again? Even once it hits the wall, it does stop. Because when it hits the back wall, the back wall applies a force to it, which causes it to slow down and then speed up in the opposite direction. It'll bounce off. And then the air hits So we have, if you were able to remove all the forces, then objects in motion continue doing what they're doing. And that is the case in space, right? In space, we don't have friction because there's just not enough air or particles or things for stuff to hit. So it's very easy for a planet to just keep being in orbit, right? Continues doing what it's doing, continuously falling towards whatever source of gravity there is and missing that object. That's what our orbit is, by the way. The Earth is constantly falling towards the sun and missing because we're also moving forwards fast enough. All right, so acceleration requires a force, an unbalanced force, while velocity does not. Velocity is a unit rate. And specifically, it's a unit rate where we are comparing distance per unit time. Acceleration is also a unit rate. Acceleration is also comparing things to a single unit of time. But here our formula is acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time. So, you 
could end up with, yeah. So for example, the most common, if we took our distance, and we had a distance in meters, and we had a time in seconds, then we would end up with a velocity in meters per second. Over here with acceleration, if we had a change in velocity in meters per second, and then we had a time in seconds, we would end up with meters per second per second.